how are you all doing as we advance into the lockdown? Strange days. Anyway, today I thought I'd take us on a walk in, uh, in country Leighton through the wonderful, glorious countryside on the edge of the, of the great forest of Essex. Walking slightly to the, uh, to the west of where I did the last video and I'm picking up various traces really today. So I've got this uh, 1893 Ordnance Survey map of the area which is very useful. But I am also going to a site I've been meaning to go to for a few years now, about three years, four years. And it's a site in Leighton with uh, a very, very interesting and mysterious history. And then we're going to pick up a number of other sites along the way. I feel like I should tell you now actually. It's a fragment of old Roman road which doesn't fit within the sort of the, uh, the established understanding of the, the roots of the Roman roads that ran through the area. It's throwing up some really interesting questions. So I really want to go there and feel it and then pick up the, uh, the Bronze Age trackway which runs through late and then we'll, we'll see where we go, yeah? Got the railway tracks there, the overground going up to Leighton Midland Road station. And down there you have a police, uh, the police holding cells down there. That's where that police van's going now. So we're just on the corner now of uh, Haynock Road and, and Leighton High Road. These new build flats here, built on the site of what's, what was one of uh, Leighton's pubs up there. It was called the Three Blackbirds. And over there we have the famous Leighton Cricket Ground, once Essex County Cricket Ground. Brewster Road here that runs around the back of the cricket ground is a really lovely, elegant street. But we're not going to go down there. I think I want to go down uh, Farmer Road and find my way into Roman Leighton. Part of the new development. And there you see quite a, not an unreasonable queue outside Sainsbury's there. And there's Leighton Midland Road Overground Station. So I think I'll come off of uh, Leighton High Road and go down here, down Cooper's Lane, which always to me feels like an old remnant of country Leighton. Today is the uh, 24th of April 2020, day after St George's Day, and we're still very much in lockdown. There's quite a lot of activity around Leighton Midland Road. All the kind of mechanics are quite busy. Down here it's nice and quiet. This is a route I used to take when we go to the, uh, there's a lovely little sort of city farm up here called Brooks Farm and I come this way and it's also the way I used to walk to the marshes actually, down to Marsh Lane Fields. When you come down streets like this it's easy to imagine Leighton as a village on the edge of London isn't it? Here we have one of the great Leighton institutions, George Mitchell School. I know there are a few regular viewers of these videos who attended George Mitchell School but probably on the other side nearer the cricket ground I imagine. This is obviously a new building here and I think now George Mitchell was an all through school from primary all the way through secondary. And if you believe uh, local historian Gary Lewis you'll know that they had a, a good football team in Gary's day. I've no doubt there must have been people that played the Leighton Orient who went to George Mitchell, surely. So maybe we'll take this little alleyway here actually. I wanted to avoid alleyways because it's difficult to get out of the way of people, but it could take us up to Jack Cornwall Park and we could have a quick look there. I like to think of little alleyways like this as fragments of old country field paths. This is a real delight, isn't it? Jack Cornwall Park. It was sort of done up a couple of years ago, and named after one of the famous sons of Leighton. Jack Cornwall was born in Leighton, and he received the Victoria Cross at the age of 16 at the Battle of Jutland in 1916, where sadly he died. He was rewarded for his acts of extreme bravery. So it's really lovely that he's honoured at this park here for his deeds, serving in the Royal Navy in the First World War. 
And then this is Brooks Farm, which is a really delightful little city farm. We used to bring the kids down here all the time. My youngest son particularly loved it down here. He always wanted to come here. And it looks now as if it's also part of Capel Manor College. One of the good things about the lockdown and being restricted with these corona walks is it's making me sort of dig deeper into the local area and actually make videos on little pockets of the area which, which I often walk through during the week and I photographed and maybe put up my blog or probably posted a picture to Instagram but never really thought, you know, oh, that's in a video. So it's good that I'm now able to really sort of get beneath the streets of Leighton and Leightonstone, dig beneath the tarmac and the asphalt and excavate all these stories like Jack Cornwall and like this Roman road we're going to go and find now. So we're now going to go a short distance along Vicarage Road, which I believe is one of the, one of the great roads of Leighton. There's some fascinating architecture along here, a real mishmash of houses from different eras. And actually, since we're heading towards this little fragment of Roman Road, it's the area really back between where I'm stood now on Vicarage Road, back towards Leighton High Road and to the right round Leighton Grange, where they did excavate some Roman remains. Indicators that there may have been some sort of Roman villa here. And those finds did lead some of the old antiquarians to speculate as to whether this was a, a more important Roman way station than you may have thought. I've written about this in my book, this other London and this area. I think what I'll do, rather than try and badly recall what I wrote, I'll, I'll drop an excerpt from the audiobook in here. In the early 1700s, workers carrying out extensive gardening operations in the grounds of Leighton Grange unearthed remains of a substantial Roman building with arched doorways, pavements and polished Egyptian granite. A moated encampment was also discovered in nearby Ruckholtz, later famous as the back door to the Olympic Park, that was also identified as having Roman origins. In his beautiful 1921 Story of Leighton and Leightonstone, W. H. Weston places the Saxon settlement of the Ley Tun in the area where Church Road cleaves from the High Road. He has visions of folk moots taking place on a green now built over with shops and housing and that serves as a rat run through to the Leebridge Road and Walthamstow. Now then, we're looking for Capworth Street. I love this house here on Vicarage Road. I believe it is one of the oldest, if not the oldest surviving house in Vicarage Road. It's certainly one of the old houses before it was fully developed. This is Capworth Road. This is where we're going to turn up and find a bit of old Roman Road. Capworth Road. The name itself goes back at least to the 1600s. I've got some great photographs I found in the junk shop on Haynot Road of some cyclists in uh, Capworth, in Capworth Street on their bike in 1938. I'll drop them in here, it's a really, really lovely discovery that I post on my blog about it as well and I'll put a link there. So we're looking for a place called Clyde Place. I think it's up here. So here we go. I think the point we're looking for is marked by this old pub here. No longer a pub, looks like it's somebody's home or some sort of offices. But this is where they excavated some fragments of old Roman road. So it's actually this trench here, trench 15, so it's not the pub, it's the bit behind the pub. It's be that new build there. Somewhere behind that wall, they dug up a fragment of Roman road Looks like it was quite a small fragment, that, but it could prove to be quite significant. The article in London Archaeologist is titled A Road to Where. A number of theories have been put forward as to the route of this road. One was that it was part of the road between London and Great Dunmo. Ralph Merrifield has proposed that it might have been a northern Fords road, taking a slightly peculiar route or it could have been a road that connected up to Ermine Street near Enfield. It could also have been simply part of a, a local Roman road network connecting the other main roads. I think what surprised the archaeologists was that 
the fragment of road they found here was as wide as some of the, the really sort of important Roman roads of southern England, like Watling Street and Ermine Street. But it's not in a place where they expect to find such a significant road. They have an idea of where they think the Roman roads to Colchester and Great Dunmo pass through Leighton. In Leightonstone there's a little bit of disagreement, but they found various Roman finds around the area, they found fragments of road in the past, but this kind of threw a spanner in the works a little bit. What I'm intrigued by is how it aligns with the fragment of Bronze Age trackway that was excavated just up here on Leighton High Road near Leighton Green. So there used to be a couple of big tower blocks on this site here on the Beaumont Estate and they were demolished, I think it was around 2009. I used to watch them being slowly pulled down as I waited for the train at Leighton Midland Road in the morning. Video Village, fantastic. Tesco's Leighton, keeping everyone fed. Pepper's Ghost Pub. Not a pub I've been in, I believe it's quite an old pub. It's named after a famous magician who was from Leighton and this was the, the name of his famous trick. And now we're at Leighton Green and there's the magnificent bus garage over there, which I believe was the centre of an industrial dispute. It became quite a, a notable cause and once the home of uh, forest buses. So I think this gap here between the two buildings is where they excavated the, uh, the, the fragment of Bronze Age trackway, which is incredibly intriguing, isn't it? If I turn around, you'll see there's the Beaumont Estate there, and just the other side of there is where they found that fragment of Roman road. So it's very possible that that Roman road may have been a continuation of the, uh, of the Bronze Age trackway, heading down from the forest to the marshes. Leighton High Road there, looking up towards Baker's Arms. We're not actually going to go that way though. We're going to go up here, along one of the old roads of Leighton, up Notts Green Road. Here's another archaeological relic as well. A telephone box. That's a vast space, isn't it? A cathedral of buses. So you can see, look, all of this area here is all fields. And this is the same area today. Now, this was originally Knott's Green Road. And this area here contains some of the oldest thoroughfares in the area. There was a Wild Street, which became Wide Street and Broad Street, Chestnuts Walk, all of them were absorbed into the Lee Bridge Road. And some of those names date back into the 1400s. This would have been waste ground here between Lee Bridge Road and the edge of Epping Forest, which is just probably about less than a mile up the end of Lee Bridge Road from here. It's incredible, you still feel that old street pattern, don't you? I love this building here, by the way. It's one of my favorite buildings in the area. Now I've committed, now I've committed one of the great kind of schoolboy errors and I've neglected to bring my spare battery with me, <laughs> which is incredible. So the battery's just run out on my, on my camera and I can't carry on filming. 
but what it does mean is that we can continue this walk on another day and we'll cover Whips Cross and the High Stone and then the area around the Green Mountain Roundabout. Oh, there's so much more to show you. So thank you once again for coming on this magical walk through the history of Leighton. We walked along a mysterious lost Roman road. We went to the site of a Bronze Age trackway. Wow, and there's so many more discoveries to be had. So I'm just gonna take a more direct route home now. And remember, stay safe, stay well, stay calm. I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Thank you.